Well, guys, here we are again. Christmas time. The Bills are out of the playoffs. And the Bills need a new coach. For, like, what, the 11th time in the past, like, four years? Just feels that way. Uh, obviously, by now, you are well aware of the fact that the Bills have fired Rex Ryan on the heels of their 34-31 to 31 loss to Miami on Christmas Eve, and I guess I'll start, I'll start there with the, my, recapping the Miami loss. I'm, I'm not going to preview the Jets game, because it's basically what amounts to a preseason game. Uh, it, I, I want, I, I suppose I want them to win the game, uh, but ultimately it doesn't really matter, obviously, it's just... It's an exhibition game, basically, for the Jets, uh, for the Bills. They're both trotting out quarterbacks that they're going to get rid of, that they don't really care what happens to because they're not part of the plans for 2017. Except for the first day. They both have 60 minutes of Buffalo, of Buffalo Bills and New York Jets football left on their contract. Like, that's it's it. The Jets have Brandon Marshall, who's out on his way out. Like, it's just, it's, it's, whatever. It's whatever. It's what it is. It is whatever. <laughs> but last week, you can't say that about the Dolphins game. Like, even if you're sitting there and you're like 7-7, seven and seven, like, eight, try telling anybody that was at the stadium that, like, that game, like, hey, man, even if we win this game, uh, you know, we still only got like a 10% chance of making the playoffs, all these things left in our way. Shut up. When Charles Clay scored that touchdown, that stadium was lit. It was, like the, it was it. We finally got it. You're down 14 points early on. You're up 14 points a couple of times in the game. Tyrod brings him back. And then... They're down 28-24. They need a touchdown. They're at their own 11. And there's like four minutes to go. And you get the touchdown drive from Tyrod Taylor. Like that's what we've been just clamoring for. For nearly two years. Just give, let me see the drive. And you see it. It happens on fourth down. What a moment. So yeah. Like don't sit there and try and tell me like, oh it didn't really matter. It mattered. The Bills would still be alive in the playoff race had they won. And time out right there. Don't start talking about, like, oh, you know, if Denver uh, loses to Oakland or, you know, whatever. Whatever the Bills would have needed to go right this week. Because, like, Baltimore and Cincinnati, Denver and Oakland, like, it doesn't matter because Denver and Baltimore are now eliminated because the Bills lost on Saturday. Had the Bills beaten the Dolphins, those two teams would still be alive. So I don't really, it, yeah, everything went in the way in week 16, week 17, now it doesn't matter. So we'll never get to find out. That's the point I'm trying to get across there. But the Miami game was so much fun right up until the very end. Um, I, Rex, I, I guess Rex had, he had his job. In his hand. And he punted his job away. I haven't really thought of it that way until just now. But Rex Ryan punted his job away. Or at least the, the certainty of his job. He punted it away. As you, I'm sure, remember, the Bills scored to go up 31-28. They allowed the guy to return the kick to the 39. They... Allowed the guy to, he kept the guy in bounds towards like the 37, 38 yard line. Like an idiot, but I mean they had enough time. They tried to get time out. Rex was too late. If you sink, I mean I know they synced it up on TV, I finally saw it. Rex was too late. But Corey White was not too late. Corey White's sitting there going like this for at least a couple seconds. And does not get the time out. Where are the referees looking? That, granted, the whole, they only had 10 guys on the field, and that's like that's a coaching thing. Like Danny Crossman looked pretty bad on Saturday, that's for sure. Special teams kind of cost him the game. Carpenter misses two field goals. 
he may very well be on his way out. Uh, the return of the kick to the 39 after the, the touchdown to take the lead, you know, 10 men on the field at this field goal, like, is bad. Um, so I don't know why Corey White didn't get a timeout anyway. Um, of course the guy just sends this sort of, like, line drive duck through the uprights and ties the game. And the Bills get the ball, and they try the Reggie Bush reverse play, which a lot of people hate. Uh, everyone hated, I guess, but, like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a play. They tried it, and it didn't work. My one gripe with the play itself is you have Sammy Watkins and LaShawn McCoy and Mike Gillisley, honestly, who are ripping these Miami Dolphins to shreds. They, it, it might, like, PETA might even have a problem with what you're doing to the Miami Dolphins. 589 yards of total offense, third most in a loss in NFL history. Perfect. Just what we need on the resume. Uh, so, yeah, that, that would be my, that my one gripe with, with that play call. It's just maybe try it to one of your guys that's maybe a better player or, like, or try something to one of your better players. Not necessarily a reverse, but you only hate it because it didn't work. And of course, Carpenter missed the field goal, the ensuing field goal. But after that, you know, Miami gets possession. They punt the ball away. There's four minutes left, like four minutes and nine seconds left in overtime. The Bills have fourth and two, maybe fourth and three around their 40 yard line. And they punt. And that's, that's it. All up until, like, that moment, I'd sort of been defending Rex uh, and saying, like, I think he deserves another shot at this. Uh, you know, it's only been two years thing, like, just, man, you can't come on. And if you're going to punt the ball in that situation where you can't tie and there's four minutes left and you only have one time out and the team you're playing can play for a tie, I I guess I want no part of it. Like, that's it. You punt, you're punting your job away to me. And he did. And then on the ensuing possession, ten men on the field. Because he doesn't know where, no one knows where Stephon Gilmore is. Those have the most assistant coaches in the entire NFL, and nobody knows that Stephon Gilmore is not out there because he's getting tested for concussion. Like, and, and obviously J.J. runs that direction. Kyle Williams did miss a tackle, sure, but J.J. runs that direction for 57 yards or whatever. Goes over 200 well, again, and the Bills lose because and I yeah because he punted. I would rather lost. By not converting fourth down. And then Rex talks about how every coach in America would punt in that situation. And then the next day cites how Belichick went for fourth and two uh, against the Colts all those years ago. Like, here you are telling me that every coach would go for it. Or would punt, I mean. And then you c cite a time a guy went for it as your example of why you should have punted. That doesn't hold any water with me, ever, right? whatever. He's, uh, he's gone. I said I wouldn't talk about it till he's gone. Here he is, he's gone. And I get it. Uh, I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if Rex went to Terry Pagula when he was in town this week and said, hey, don't make me go to New York and fire me the next day. <coughs> That's been building up for like three minutes, so thanks for bearing with me there. Um, yeah, Rex might have just been like, "Let me go watch my kid play Ohio State. Don't let, don't make me go here to New York where I used to be the coach and look like a fool." And I get that. So Rex gets fired. Anthony Lynn is named uh, the the interim coach, and. The Bills do nothing on Tuesday. They kind of do. They just hold. They're a holding pattern. And on Wednesday, they trot Anthony Lynn out there by himself to answer to everything that's happened. And that, to me, is just the. That's where the Bills are receiving a lot of criticism. And honestly, it seems pretty deserving that Doug Whaley should have been out there to answer to the you know to what had happened. <laughs> That a quick statement from the owner really doesn't 
you know, doesn't really do it. Uh, I, I get that. I, I get the criticism there. Because you watch Anthony Lynn up there, and he just looks like, man. You ever, you ever see Liar Liar with Jim Carrey, where he's in the courtroom, and he's, like, trying to lie, but everything comes out as, like, the truth, and he has to figure out a way to to try to, like, to, you know what I mean, to get the truth out of not being able to lie, and uh, whatever, all, all that stuff. Yeah, if, you, if you've seen the movie, you know. And he's sitting there, and he just can't stop drinking the water. And I noticed that Anthony Lynn, right there in the middle, there, he just started drinking a lot of the water. Like, he was nervous, and I felt bad for him. And that's how I would compare that situation. Uh, I don't think... It's fine that he's up there, he's a new coach, he should be speaking. But somebody's got to have his back to answer the questions that he obviously doesn't have the answer to, nor should he have to answer, really. So, Anthony Lynn, as an interim head coach, uh, it, it, it intrigues me, I suppose, just because he has received head coaching interviews, I believe, with San Francisco last year. Uh, I, I think that he's got a pretty good head on his shoulders. He seems like a, a, a tougher coach than Rex, obviously. Um, I'm, I was trying to think about what I would what kind of situation I, w I would want most. And I kind of do want Anthony Lynn to stay, and I kind of still want Tyrod Taylor to stay. I know Tyrod's not going to start on Sunday. The Bills are going to go with E.J. Manuel, as I alluded to earlier. Now the reports are coming out that Tyrod might need sports hernia surgery and, like, they could kick in his claws and every his, his claws in his contract. And just, wow. Wow. Just... Just wow. Truth be told, I kind of want Tyrod Taylor back. Because, I'll get back to the coach in a second. Because, are you sure you're getting improvement by going to somebody else? You're going to get a new coach, obviously. But I mean, hopefully they can figure out a way to keep Anthony Lynn on at least as OC. Because, like, the Bills are scoring like 25 points a game. They got, they're in the top five in touchdowns. They're... The, the, the downfall is defense, and that's why you fired Rex Ryan. Because Rex Ryan comes in touting, carrying a big stick, and defense! We're going we're gonna to be number one in defense! And they weren't. The defense was not good. It was inconsistent throughout. Marcel Darius talking about ex-girlfriends and, like, you know, you, you, know you, you like them and everything, but you don't have the communication that you need. Like, there you go. Everyone liked Rex. They liked him. He's a player's coach, but, like... It, I don't know, man. Like, look at the Patriots. Do you think the Patriots necessarily have fun on a day-to-day -day basis? Yes and no. Do they have fun at practice? Probably probably not. Like, Belichick's a strict... <coughs> expects a lot. Cut you like this. You know, like, all the guys are on their heels. But, they win all the time. So they're having fun in that regard. And Sammy Watkins talked about that. Like, they, they need somebody to come in and just... Just lay... Like, just... This is the way it is, and that's why, like, my way or the highway type of guy, and that's why I have sort of been coming around to the idea of Tom Coughlin, because that's the kind of thing I think we get, and then maybe Tom Coughlin coaches for four or five years, hopefully, last coach to make it four years was Marv Levy, and then transitions out, and then maybe, like, Anthony Lynn, if he's still there, I don't know, I don't know what the plan would be, but I'm coming around to that idea, and... I, I guess like I want to hear what you guys think. I, I this is what I'm this is what I'm giving you what I think, and I want to hear what you guys have to say. I need ideas. I need things like real good ideas. Like you can be mad at the Pagulas, you can be mad at Whaley, like but like they clearly measure success. This is they they want success, and they measure success in wins and losses. Obviously, because Rex is out. 15 and 16, not even two seasons. Out. We need wins. I like that. What do you like? Winning. I know. That's what we we watch our favorite team because we want them to win. For the fun of it, I'll give you a prediction for the Bills game on Sunday. Bills are going to beat the Jets like what? 29-22, something stupid like that because who's playing? We don't even know. Guys, thanks for coming this far in the video. Um, I want to hear your reaction too. Hit me up on Twitter. Twitter handle's the same as my username for YouTube. As always, Go Bills!